Let's go, Chriso. Let's go, Chriso. Here, how I booked a Nickelodeon television show with no acting experience. Okay, so I'm a young dude. I'm actually had just been doing auditions with my agents and everything. Just got an agency. I'm about a freshman in high school. So in in life, I didn't have any real acting experience. I, I did the normal acting classes that everyone has when they like um, in school. So I had theater, theater one, theater two, nothing too serious. So I was in theater and uh, I was going on auditions. I had just booked an agent and I remember I did my first commercial when I was a freshman. It was a, a paintball commercial. After the paintball commercial, I did a commercial for DJing equipment and then I did a Pillsbury biscuit commercial. So I had only had three commercials under my belt and that was my only professional acting experience. But my auditions started to get better. So eventually, auditions for things like Disney and Nickelodeon would come. And I would get super hyped because I always had a dream of being on Disney or Nickelodeon. Now, I feel like there are a, a couple of different parts when it comes to this whole, I don't know, career. Like, you gotta put in the work, but I also believe that you have to have like a certain amount of faith to really like make this happen, you know? So I'm big on manifestation. So if you ask anybody who knew me when I was in high school, one of the main things I would always say was one day, I'm gonna be on a Disney or a Nickelodeon show, period. Disney or Nickelodeon, I didn't know which one, I didn't care which one. My Nickelodeon audition finally comes up. Now mind you, since I wasn't in acting class and I wasn't in acting school, I had to just prepare for these auditions the best way I can. And what made sense to me was to watch Nickelodeon and write down my favorite scenes like from my favorite characters uh i would watch icarly uh i would watch um victorious you know what i'm saying so i would write down little scenes from icarly and from victorious and i would literally go in the mirror stand in the mirror as a little chris and i would act out these scenes i would say leon uh the, the character andre's role i would say pick characters that i felt like i could have played and i would redo the work you know in the mirror boom so that's the only kind of training I had. I always loved acting growing up. I always was goofy. I always entertained. So I believe that there was a lot of it that was also natural for me. That's all I went off of. The audition comes and I go into the room and I just literally do everything that I had planned. Like people think, a lot of times people think, oh, you need to go to these crazy acting schools. You need to spend all this money on acting class just to make this happen just to make the dream happen when it's not true. There are people who become actors and they have never acted a day in their life. They just have a look. You never know what it is that is gonna be the reason that you get a role. My first big role was on a show called How To Rock. That's the Nickelodeon show. I played Kevin Reed, the drummer. He was a tall, skinny, goofy dude who played the drums. I happened to be tall. I happened to be skinny. I happened to be very goofy and I played the drums for like a good amount of my life. I played for the church, I played for little school talent show events. So all of these things kind of lined up making the Kevin role the perfect role for me. It wasn't that I went and, 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 and trained to be the best drummer or trained to be, it was just like divine timing. Everything just comes together in that way. Nobody in my whole family has acted. We don't have, I don't have no acting family members. I have nobody that's in the industry. I was the first person in my whole family to even attempt this whole, you know, acting world or acting career. So therefore, everything I was doing was from scratch. So we didn't have all the answers, which a lot of people think you need to get into this business. I started from scratch. So my Nickelodeon audition is here. Now, my Nickelodeon audition for How to Rock was one of the most intense auditions I ever had. Like a lot of times I was auditioning for shows where I'd have to do one scene, maybe another scene, and that was it. The scene may be one or two pages, you know? But this Nickelodeon audition actually required a lot. Like this, I remember we had three scenes. Each scene was about three pages, okay? So we got nine pages to memorize. Um, because the character was a drummer, I had to perform two different drum solos. And because the character rapped, I had to perform a rap. Okay, so that's nine pages to memorize, a drum solo, and a rap. You feel me? So like all of this stuff is in one audition. 
and I had never even had an audition that was like that intense before. It took it required a lot of a lot of planning. But I was like, okay, where I lack on like being able to hire an acting coach or hire an actual or go to an acting school, I said I'm going to beat everybody by just doing the most work. When it came to my scenes, I memorized and memorized and memorized these scenes. I may have went over each scene over a hundred times. My family they were over it, but they were here to commit to me. Shout out to my family because they always supported me, but I would literally pop up on my little brothers like, all right, Terrell, I need you to go over this with me about 15 times. Then Isaiah, I need you to go over this with me 15 times. Mom, I need you to go over this with me 15 times. Dad, I need you to go over it 15 times. You see, like, I was like, I need to know this front, back, side to side. Once I finally felt like I felt comfortable with the scenes, I would record them ahead of time and practice and then rewatch them. This is all before the audition. I'd rewatch them and then do it again and rewatch it and then do it again and then rewatch it. I was not holding out any stops. Then the drumming part came. I was a drummer, but I actually, there were other drummers who were involved that actually were more, I guess, talented than me and, and actually had been drumming. So I was like, okay, how am I going to win with this drum? I wanted to outdo the competition on every part. So I was like, I wanna be the best at my scenes. I wanna have the best drum solo. So I would practice for hours, drum solos. My dad plays the piano and he had a couple of friends who actually knew how to play the drums. So they came to the house and they'd help me practice my drum solos. And I'm practicing and practicing and learning. And then it was like, okay, once I felt I got that, I felt like, yo, I could perform a drum solo for a concert right now and I'm ready. Then there was the rap. I was like, okay, the rap, let's get this part. You could do any rap. They said you could say a rap that's original. You could say a rap that somebody else's rap. They just wanted to see and make sure that you could flow. But what did I say? I said I wanted to outdo my competition. So what did I do? I wrote a custom Nickelodeon rap. I wrote a custom Nickelodeon rap and I put the names of shows like iCarly, Victorious. I put all the top Nickelodeon shows in the rap. I'm, I wrote it. I memorized it and I was like, you know what? Just in case, I'm gonna write two more raps with three, with different shows. So one rap had a, a certain amount of shows, another Nickelodeon had, rap had a, a certain amount of shows, and another one had different shows, all different shows, three different raps, three different flows. Each song sounded different. Cause I was like, all right, what if they really like this rap and they want me to do another rap? I wanted to get him. And I was like, and then just in case, I'm gonna do another rap. There was no such thing as too much for me. I wanted this role more than anybody. And where I lacked in like maybe, oh, I, I can't really prepare like some of these other people who had been in acting schools their whole life or ha who had been doing this their whole life, doing it longer than me, maybe got friends and family in the industry. I didn't have nothing, but I had drive, I had motivation. And I was like, bro, I'm not gonna stop. So I did that. And on the day of, Every time, I remember during this audition, it wasn't a one audition process. If they liked you, about two weeks went by and they called you back to audition again. So then you have to come back in, do it again. And if they liked you, another two weeks would go by and you would have to do it again. The How to Rock auditioning process took three months. Three months. Three months of me figuring out, are they gonna call me? What's gonna happen? Is this gonna be the final phone call or am I gonna have to do it again? But I didn't care. Cause I'm like, this is, this is what it takes. This is how you win. When I finally went into every one of these auditions, I probably had to go in maybe eight different times within that three months, including fly to California. Yeah, cause I was on the East Coast. I'm in New York. I had to fly to California to audition the last two times and they didn't pay for that. That was on my money, okay? I had to, and, and thank God I had these commercials that I did, because I was able to save enough money to fly to Cali. But if I couldn't pay for that plane ticket to fly, I wouldn't have been able to come. And if I went out here and didn't get the role, they not giving me that money back. That would have just been wasted money, but I had to take this chance. You have to take chances in this game to win. And every time I walked into a room, I wore an orange shirt, every time. Every audition, I would go buy a different orange shirt. One got a collar, one got a stripe, one is long sleeve. I wanted them to see me in that orange. I wanted them to see this is Nickelodeon. There is nothing about this kid who is not Nickelodeon. I did all of that and I won. At the end of the day, 
they couldn't deny it. Like by the time I took my second flight to uh, California, I did my audition and I remember it was like two hours after I left the building. I got a phone call from my agent like, Chris, you booked the role. I'm like, wait, 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 well, what you said? Don't, don't, don't talk in acting form for me. Don't say no booked. Did I get the role? They're like, yes, Chris, you got the role. And at that point, me and my dad just, ah! Yo, we just ran. We ran and we ran. Me and my dad ran around the whole block. I don't even know where we was going, but like, this was a three months process and we won. After that, they were like, yep, you got the role. We're gonna move you to California in two weeks and you're gonna start your journey. And here we are. I've been in Cali ever since. I had no official acting training. I just did anything that made sense. Because at the end of the day, guys, all of us can act. We are acting every day. You right now who's watching this screen, you were acting earlier at some point in your day. So you don't need all this money and all these resources to become an actor. All you need to have is to drive the passion and do the work. And you'll win. Nickelodeon show, man, no acting experience. Let go. Let's go, Chris. Let's go, Chris. Let's go, Chris.